to So What If I Sew. It is day five of the Sew You In June challenge. Oh my goodness, this is going so fast, I can't believe it. So, um, firstly, welcome to So What If I Sew. If this is the first video you're watching, um, I've linked all of the previous day's videos below, or the, well, the playlist for all the previous day's videos below. Head over to day one so you can see what on earth I'm talking about. Um, if you are, have been watching every day, welcome back. Today we are talking all things seam finishes. So, my original intention for this video was to show you a seam finish that I don't normally do. Um, however, I actually do most seam finishes like a lot um, and I tend to mix and match a lot in garments. Most garments I do will have three or four different seam finishing techniques in them. So what I actually thought is that I would just demo all the ones I'm using and see if that's any use to you guys, hopefully it is. So in this video I will be overlocking seams, I will be pinking them. Um, I may even do a zig- uh, I will, I'll do a zigzag and an overcast. Sorry, my brain is gone today. Um, so, overlock, pinking, uh, zigzag, slash overcast, depending on the seam. Um, and I will also do a French seam tutorial in this video as well. So, I've marked out where the different bits are with timestamps in the description below if you're only really here for one technique. And firstly, I will show you where we're at so far because there isn't going to be that much live like sew along sewing for me this week. So we have uh, the front of my dress with a dart in it, uh, the start, well two darts, the start of a test French seam which we'll talk about later and the facing is on. Now I've left the facing like this at this point because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pink the whole inside to take the seam allowance off because that gives me triangles that are easier to snip into. So we'll do that first and then uh, we'll finish off the edge of the facing with some overlocking and then we'll move through like that and I'll try and show you at least one example of each seam finishing technique and we'll catch up at the end of the video. Um, let me know in the comments below how your project's going if you're doing so new in June. If you're not, let me know your thoughts. Do you have any other seam finishing techniques you like doing? Um, everyone's different. I know everyone's got like a certain comfort zone with what they're happy with and what they're not. So I'm always super, super interested to hear from you guys to see um, like what techniques you're using because we can all learn from each other. And if anyone's got a technique I've never heard of, I wanna know so I can go try it out. So without further ado, let's get going. So the first technique, um, I can actually show you sat here, I don't need to be at the machine. These are my pinking shears, they're from Hobbycraft, they're very very bulky but they do the job. So just for comparison, normal house office scissors, um, so these are, these are pretty big okay. In terms of sewing scissors, my other scissors are longer but much much thinner. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clip along because the instructions say not only to clip into the curves as you would usually but also to remove the seam allowance. So I'm going to go along and do that now being very very careful because when you attach the facing to the Nina Lee Carbon B dress you leave five centimetres at each end not stitched which I assume is to do with the zip insertion that we will talk about tomorrow. So if I do this quickly um, I'm just cutting literally the se the stitch lines here. I'm just cutting about half the seam allowance off. So I'm not cutting the whole thing off. I'm always a bit tentative about doing that. And top tip when you're pinking, make sure you just have the layers of fabric you want to cut because one of my first ever garments I made when this is the only seam finishing technique I could do, I cut through the body of the skirt. Um, while I was pinking off the uh, fraying edges and I was bereft because it is in the middle in the front only I notice it I still wear it out but I know it's there and it's quite frustrating so there are easier ways but pinking is like as a technique there's no skill involved because you are literally just using a pair of pinking shears um, but it's super, super good and accessible for beginners. If you're not sure about, you know, how to finish certain seams, 
pinking shears will generally do the job. Downside is I have no idea how you're meant to sharpen them at all, like no clue. So let's cut into that there. Sorry, this is a little bit off camera, but I'm still really trying to figure out how to do overhead filming because I can't, I've, I've seen a couple of ways of doing it, but a lot of them involve me buying more equipment and I don't really have the money to do that right now. But I do want to be able to show you guys decent tutorials for stuff. Um, I do have a mini tripod that's got like flexi legs but does not seem to support my phone or camera or anything at that angle, it seems to just fall over. So maybe that's something I need to look into. Um, if you are a fellow vlogger and you film in a sort of tutorial layout with like top down filming, can you let me know how you do it? Or if you've got any sort of affordable equipment tips I would really appreciate it because I want to make sure I'm delivering content and I have now kind of hit a point where I do I do need it um to be able to show you that sort of top down view where my hands aren't in the way so there we go so you end up with these little trailing bits I have got a scraps box next to me so I should throw those into it because oh my god my trousers I'm gonna stand up and show you this my trousers are covered I don't know if you can see that in um, purple fluff absolutely covered but here we are so nice neat pinked edge now what I'm gonna do is get my sewing snips here and I'm going to snip into very carefully into some of these triangles in the corners to just make them that little bit bigger so to take this one out it's kind of helpful as well if you're if you're new to um, snipping out triangles and facings having pinking um, like a pinking texture to work from is really helpful because what you do is you pick you know you need to cut a triangle out it's not enough to snip you do actually need so when you're on an inside curve like this you have to cut an actual triangle out because that means the fabric then has the space to meet each other like that. If you just cut a snip, the fabric still sort of has to overlap like that. Um, so it is really important. And vice versa, when you're doing um, outward curves, you do need to make sure you've got a sticky out triangle. It really, really helps. So again, we'll do that. So I'm going to pick one of my little triangles. Go for that one. So we just cut following the lines of the other two and we make a little triangle. Uh, so I've done that, I'm going to go through and cut a few more triangles out now of the neckline and then when we fold it over that is the inside facing hem done. So nice, simple, easy and we're sorted. Um, so the next technique I'm going to use is overlocking and I'm going to use this on the outside edge um of the facing i'm gonna have to do it in the morning because i'm a considerate neighbor um, and it is quite late so i don't want to wake anyone up so i'm gonna finish off this and then i will catch up with you guys and some overlocking first thing tomorrow so we are back and it is time to do some overlocking so last night i did a wee bit of sewing and i popped my sleeves in flat um and I quickly had sewed up the back and I attached some rather marvellous pockets. So here we are. Look at that. So that's the front skirt with integrated pockets. Big fan of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is overlock the front facing. Now for very similitude, uh, as I, you know, I always keep it very real with you guys. Um, I have just done one of the hardest Pilates workouts of my life and I am genuinely like shaking. It's quite hard to stand up. So the noise you can hear in the background is me running the hottest bath in the universe so that I can walk tomorrow. Um, I feel really good, but I also might die. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about overlocking. So you have lots of different options when you overlock. You can three stitch, you can four stitch, you can cut off the edge as you bind, or you can lift your knife and just bind the edge with your overlock locker um if you have an overlocker of course now i'm going to use my knife because i'd also like a little bit this facing's a little big um and it kind of overlaps a little bit i don't know if you can see with the sleeve head so i'm going to take a wee bit off the outside uh, so when we feed it in i'll show you in a second but we have to keep it in line 
with the outside edge of the plate. So let me show you. Here is the beautiful Arnold, there's Cyril. Um, Arnold is a thing of beauty and he is very, very good at cutting the edges off things. So when I feed the fabric in, I'm going to make sure, sorry, camera wobble there, it's lined up with this outside edge here. If I didn't want to cut off the edge and I was being lazy, and I didn't want to lift the knife, I'd line it up with that little middle line there, and that will just bind through the edge. But what I'm going to do is line it right up with the outside and cut off about an eighth of an inch, if that, just a wee bit, bind the edges and make them nice and neat. Because as you can see, if I zoom backwards, we've got some fraying everywhere. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to finish all of these raw edges with you guys today. So without further ado, let's do some overlocking and then we can talk all things overcast. So I didn't film that with the overlocker, um, I time lapsed it instead because the overlocker is so loud you wouldn't really hear me talking. So I thought I'd just get it out of the way and then show you guys. So I made a bit of a rookie mistake there and I forgot to check my overlocker settings. So you can see, let's start at the beginning, right, is that the beginning? Yes it is. Look at this incredibly wobbly stitching, it's really puffy, it's really loose, it's not binding at all. The green thread is kind of okay, but all the white th thread's incredibly fluffy. So, as I sewed along, I then realised, I was like, oh goodness, my stitch tension is way, way off. So, um, I whacked all the stitch tension down, because I'm working with a heavier weight fabric. Then I realised that my, <laughs> I really didn't pay attention, my stitch length was also incredibly long, which is what gives us these big bobbly ones here. Uh, so I whacked that down to two on my machine and then at this point I realised also that my differential feed was set at 0.8 which was for some really lightweight chiffon, I was, was it chiffon or silk or something? something of that texture that I was finishing the other day uh, which is why that didn't work at all. So then as we kind of go along it gets a lot neater, a lot neater until we end up with this on the inside which is lovely and tight and as it should be compared with this which is is just not right at all it's still not exactly as i'd like it but i don't really care because it's a facing however i am going to investigate a little further i think there's something wrong with the stitch tension on my overlocker because even when i put it down to like full tension i don't think it's as tense as it could be but i'm actually there's a lot more tension numbers on here than i realized so i'm going to explore them a little further and overlock my sleeve heads right now and then share my findings with you as to what settings i am using for linen So me and Arnie here with finally figured out the best overlock settings for my linen. I'm going to be using a lot of overlock in this garment so I'm much happier with these stitches. They're much tighter, um, there's very very little sort of bump to them. They'll shrink really nicely I think as well when I iron them. So happy with those. So the settings I can confirm at least if you have a Singer 80, uh, what do I have? Singer 18 HD 854 I think that's what I have review vlog coming soon. Um, if you have one of these then the settings I used were I whacked it up to nine on all of the stitch tension because uh, that seemed to work and then I knocked the stitch length down here down to two and I've got my differential just my differential feed just below one so what is that? 1.2 two something like that 1.2 and um, and that has given me a really nice clean solid finish with no lumps and bumps um, and no tension issues so yeah I definitely I would recommend if you do have linen I'd overlock it because it frays so badly and a lot of the other methods we use they'll work but nothing works quite as well for fraying fabric as an overlocker so you know just bear that in mind but if you don't have one then we're the method we're about to cover is the overcast stitch or over edge stitch which uses a special foot on your machine um, and it is a lot cheaper to buy an over edge foot if you have the stitch than it is 
to buy an overlocker because you need to hem um, because you need to finish seams so we're going to talk about that in a second and then the main garment will have french seams anyway so that will make life a lot easier so let's move on to over edge and overcast stitches if you would like to embark on the journey that is an over edge stitch or an overcast stitch first of all you will need a foot like this so if i show it to the camera it's got this little ski that sort of sticks out the bottom and then it looks like that kind of top down so what you're going to do is you're going to align your fabric with the inside edge of the little ski and then the stitches go either side of that little crossbar in the middle and if you notice at the back the crossbar isn't fully slapped down so the stitches slide off the back and that's what keeps them far apart in terms of what you're looking for on your machine to use with this foot you are that's why you're this way around i use what do i use i use either of these so 10 11 14 is pretty good in my experience um but in your sewing machine manual it will say what your overcast stitch is but for me it's generally 14 is the safest one but any of these will actually work to be fair with this foot. So uh, let's give it a go and see what happens. So to demonstrate this properly, I'm using the edge of one of the pockets and I am lining it up with the foot. I'll move you over here in a second just so you can see. So I'm lining it up there, pop the needle down and let's take you for a closer look. So the fabric is lined up there the needle is down and I'm going to very very gently oh my <laughs> um so you can't see this but I have got two pedals plugged in under my machine one of which is my overlocker pedal and the other is my sewing machine and my overlocker is obviously no longer at the desk but for some reason the pedal is very much still under the desk uh so that's exciting right do we have the correct pedal yes we do there we go so it moves I moved you a bit closer it moves quite slowly quite as neat but it does the job which is great not the easiest thing in the world to get corners on especially I'll be honest with one hand because I am holding the camera with the other even on a tripod so as you'll see the stitches go across the crossbar and slide off the back Those are three seam finishing techniques. Um, I will need to do a little bit more sewing of the garment before I show you some French seams, but those will be my fourth technique in this video. So I hope this is helpful because I realized actually there are very few seam finishing techniques I've not had a go at now. So I thought actually, my, my general thing is I don't tend to like overlock everything on one garment or do French seams on one garment completely. I do tend to mix and match and just do whatever a is most comfortable inside the garment and b is best for the fabric um and you know just because if it's uh, for example my recent viscose emea shirt in that lovely uh, green like the dotty about dots bottle green viscose from lady mcelroy um the inside of that's got a rolled hem then it's got an overlock around the gather of the fluted sleeve because they fray like nothing else and then it's got um, French seams on the raglan sleeve at the arm. Uh, so I've kind of gone up and just done whatever works best for each area. So I'm going to do a little bit more sewing. And then we will meet back to do the French seams that go from the underarm all the way down to the bottom of the garment. But this is really fun and I'm really enjoying actually showing you guys some different techniques today. I don't normally do tutorials or anything, so this is quite fun. Uh, and hopefully you are enjoying this. Here we are with French seams. I've sewn enough of the garment that it actually looks like a dress now, which is very exciting. So, lots of people find French seams very scary. And I'll be honest, I used to be one of those people. I really did. I can, oh, 
sorry. Earlier in the video I got my ring light in just the right place and now I've had to plug it in somewhere else so you may see some circles in my glasses, sorry. It's quite dark in here without it so we're doing our best. Anyway, French seams boggle the mind a little and one of the things that gets people first is that you sew the first seam with the wrong sides of the garment together. So instead of, as is traditional, garment inside out with seams showing, and sewing it together like that, as we would usually, what we're gonna do is actually this. So here we go, here is my dress right side out. And you can see I have clipped all down one side of it because it's just easier and clearer for you guys to see. So I've clipped all the way down because I'm doing one very long French seam all the way from the sleeve right the way down to the hem. The next thing with French seams is there's a little bit of maths involved. So I have a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance or a 1.5 centimetre. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna sew this outside seam with the wrong sides together. I'm gonna sew at 3 eighths or one centimetre if you're metric. I'm then gonna trim it right down, basically cut an eighth of an inch off it, flip it through like this, and then enclose that edge and sew this with basically two eighths. So I'm splitting my seam allowance, not quite in half, you need the first one to be a little bigger to trim it down, um, and then basically covering it with the second one. So what you get is a really strong double sewn enclosed seam. I'm a huge fan of them. Now I am being a lot more careful than I would usually be today. Normally I would have a clip at the end, a clip at the arm, a clip at the dart, and then a clip down here at the pocket and a clip at the end, so like five max. I do a lot of this by eye, I'm not as careful as I should be. Um, but especially with linen, it doesn't really matter because it's such a stable fabric. So let's do the first bit of that together and then we'll catch up um, when I've sewn this together and I'll show you the process of snipping and flipping it through. So. Let's do that first. I'm going to time lapse it because I will have to do this quite slowly and it won't be that interesting to watch. So there we are, one of the most counterintuitive things known to man, but there is our seam sewn <laughs> with wrong sides together. My pockets, it, oh, it looks so wrong, and it always does, and this is the stage people tend to doubt themselves at. The next stage makes you feel much worse because we're about to cut pretty much all of this off. I'm gonna trim it down to about there, so we'll get you know about an eighth of an inch off there. To really trim it down, that's very important because um, it gives you a nice seam on the inside and means that the whole raw edge is enclosed. But you can see why linen is the ideal fabric to show you guys seam finishing techniques on because look at this. It frays just as it moves really. Um, one thing I would probably do in future is, to be honest, I probably run all my um, pieces through an overlocker before I even start um, and then just use a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance the whole way around because the fraying is horrendous. So fingers crossed. We're going to cut this edge off now, line it up with the sewing machine to do our inside edge, and we're going to have a beautiful French seam, so let's do it. So you join me here, having just snipped off all the edge, so by the way, I am wearing shorts, they're just very, very small. <laughs> I realise it looks like I'm not. So there we go, I've trimmed it right down, so what we're going to do now is flip it through. So take it through to the other side of our lovely garment so we're through on the wrong side now oh my god I've got a huge huge hole in this garment so everyone uh, in the process of doing my French seam I've accidentally cut the most enormous hole in my garment so I will tell you firstly what I've done there we go that is nothing I can fix I can't stitch that back together that is a huge hole it's right into my French seam as well. So my plan is, this is what happens when you rush, don't rush. Um, I've got another bigger piece of the fabric, which I'm putting over the hole. Luckily my thread matches like perfectly. So if I flip that over, we're on the right side. Hang on, no. So we're currently on the right side, but I'm just gonna check it. It's right from the wrong side. So 
that is big enough however it is going to be very noticeable I think so there's that's quite upsetting there's not much I can do about it however that's probably as good as it's going to get um, I'm going to have a little think and see if that's the best way to do it I think it's going to be I have fixed my the hole in my dress as much as it is possible to fix it. Um, I'm quite annoyed with myself. Um, also, if you are tempted in the comments to offer reasons as to why it happened, please don't. Um, I know exactly why it happened and as we've all been here before, it's really, really irritating and you do kick yourself a bit, so I don't need anyone helping me with that. Um, so, just a nice sort of call out there. Um, what I did was I sewed a patch onto the inside, which I'll trim down once I'm totally happy with it. But otherwise, my French seam is done. So I freehanded folding it together, which is what I normally do. But you, of course, can and probably should press it and either clip or pin it. So if I turn my dress right way out, Luckily, the little hole in the back of the dress is actually at the back. It's a little bit visible, but in the grand scheme of things, not the end of the world because it's also actually in the underarm. So, fingers crossed, my arm actually should be covering it the majority of the time. I am going to shore it up a little bit. But otherwise, there we have the first side seam of my dress. So I will give this a press when I do the other one because I'll do them all at the same time. But... I'm pretty happy with this actually, um, despite, I'm, I'm annoyed about the hole on the side, but I'm actually quite happy with that as a nice solid side seam. So there we go, that is the fourth seam finishing technique of this video. Now my next job is I'm going to go through, do my French seam on the other side, and then I will do some, I think, hemming tomorrow, but as long as my zip opening is prepared for tomorrow's video, then I think we can call it a night and go and get a glass of wine and uh, cease beating myself up for cutting a hole in my dress because A, these things happen, and B, you know what, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it now, so there's no point worrying about it or fretting about it because it is my hobby. I'm not giving this to someone for money. Uh, it's just mildly frustrating because it's quite expensive fabric, but we're all we're all good. We're okay. So let's do the other side. Um, I'll do that off camera because I'm just going to time lapse it so I can get it done quickly. Um, and then I will be delighted to share the zip video with you tomorrow. So if you have found this video useful and enjoyed it, hopefully, please give this video a like and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. If this video has inspired you to catch up with the So New in June challenge, head back to the playlist below and you can watch days one uh, to four and then catch up with me today, day five. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to talking all about fastenings and zips with you tomorrow and to seeing our garments. It's not long now, it's, this week has gone so quickly and it's been such a joy. So until then, I will see you next time guys. Thanks for watching.